My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. We're looking at the comparison between Romans 5 to 8 and 1 Corinthians 15 as it relates to the resurrection. Paul talked about the resurrection that was guaranteed by the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 5, the one who has worked us for this uh, has also given us the Spirit as the earnest of the resurrection. And so there's no question that the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit were given to guarantee that resurrection. Well, in Romans chapter 8, Paul says the Spirit had been given to guarantee the adoption. They had already received the Spirit the spirit of adoption. They were looking for the adoption at the time of the resurrection, Romans 8, 23. So what, I, what I'm focused on here is this concept of sonship and the inheritance. Now, I, I promised you yesterday I would, you know, uh, get to this idea of suffering, and I'm going to, right? <laughs> I'm definitely going to. But I want to get back to this. I want, I've, I've just got to share this with you about the inheritance as being the new Jerusalem, the new creation. Remember, the writer of Hebrews said, Hebrews chapter 11, that Abraham longed for a city. He longed for a country. Well, what city did he look for? He looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. He looked for the new Jerusalem. That was the Abrahamic inheritance. Well, why is that? Well, because it is because the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the earth, is the new creation. It's the resurrection, new creation. When I discussed the Abraham, Abrahamic inheritance, I pointed out to you the, the temporal contrast between Abraham seeing that promise far off versus the New Testament writers saying it was at hand. Now, watch this. In Galatians chapter 4, Paul discusses the Abrahamic promise, the Abrahamic inheritance. And he says, now I speak to you who know the law. Do you also hear the law? And he gave an allegory. Two women, two sons, two mountains, two cities. And he said, the Jerusalem that now is, that's Old Covenant Jerusalem, represented Old Covenant Israel and represented the Old Covenant. But he said, the Jerusalem that is above is the mother of us all. But now notice what he said. Those who are of the bondwoman, i.e. Hagar, which he said represented the old covenant seed of old covenant Israel, shall not inherit the Abrahamic promise. Why? It is because they were, at that time, not of the true Abrahamic seed. How is that? Because only those who are of faith are of Abraham. Galatians 3 verse 6. And they were persecuting the true seed of Abraham. So what does Paul say? He goes back to the story of Genesis, back to the story of Abraham, Sarah, Ishmael, uh, Sarah and Isaac, of Hagar and Ishmael. And he says, as it was then, even so it is now, the children of the bondwoman, i.e., Hagar, the bondwoman, Ishmael, the child, did persecute the children of the promise, i.e. Isaac. So he poses the question, what then? What does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her ch child, the children of the flesh, the old covenant Israel, will not receive the inheritance. As long as they were under the old covenant, as long as they were rejecting the true seed of Abraham, i.e. Christ, they could not receive the inheritance. But wait a minute. Notice that he says, the Jerusalem that now is, is in bondage. The Jerusalem that is above is the mother of us all. That Jerusalem 
from above is the heavenly Jerusalem that Abraham longed to receive. Now watch Hebrews chapter 12, as we pointed out in the previous video, the writer says, well, you haven't come to my uh, to the Old Covenant Sinai, in other words, you haven't come to physical Jerusalem. You have come to Mount Zion. You have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to the new Jerusalem, which is the church of the living God. What did he say? You have come to it. They are standing right there on the very cusp of receiving the New Jerusalem. Well, what's the New Jerusalem? It's the Abrahamic resurrection promise. They were even in the process of receiving that promise, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. And I don't have time to develop that anymore, but notice this. We come to the book of Revelation. What does the book of Revelation present for us? Well, exactly and precisely like the book of Revelation, there are two women. There is O Covenant Babylon, the harlot bride. There are two seeds, the Old Covenant seed, the New Covenant seed. There are two mountains, one mountain to be cast down and thrown into the sea. There are two Zions, that is to say, there are two new or two Jerusalems. There is the Old Covenant Jerusalem, the city, quote, where our Lord was slain, unquote, Revelation 11, verse 8, that was about to be destroyed. This is Babylon, the city that killed the the prophets. It is where the Lord was slain. It is the city that killed the apostles and the prophets. It is the city, again, that killed Jesus and that was killing the apostles and prophets of Jesus. Folks, there's not but one city that ever did that. So there's the new Jerusalem, but what they were, what were they looking for? The new Jerusalem that was about to come down out of heaven from God so that man could have God dwelling in our midst forever. And Jesus said, in regard to that new Jerusalem, in regard to that new creation, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Things could not be clearer. The Abrahamic inheritance was sonship inheritance, but it was resurrection. It was the new creation. It was the new Jerusalem. And Paul in Galatians, the writer of Hebrews, and Revelation all tell us emphatically that new Jerusalem, that Abrahamic inheritance, was about to come down from God out of heaven so that the tabernacle of God could dwell among men. And you and I, by faith in Christ, can now enter that city and dwell with Him, He with us, with eternal life. All righty, we will see you, Lord willing, on the flip side as we continue our study of the sufferings of Christ and the resurrection.